Okay. And then, as I mentioned in the last video clip, Marx himself did not introduce any concrete international relations theories. Because Marx, he died, of course, not very early, but um, in his life at time, he did not have a chance to create a form of international relations theory. So, um, also called Marxist international relations theories, are theories that is built, that's built um, based on Marx's idea, however, they're not built by Marx themselves. So, they're called Marxist theory, um, based on some very important elements of Marx. Then, the first one, or the most elemental version of Marxist international relations theory, was introduced by the first version of international relations theory, Marxist international relations theory. It's introduced by him, Lenin. Lenin was the first supreme leader of the Soviet Union. He somehow is the founder of inter of Soviet Union. Then he found Soviet Union. Then before he came to power as the leader of Soviet Union, of course he led the uphold of the Bolsheviks at that time. Bolsheviks, Bo Yi Savoy in Chinese. Bolsheviks, um, they are communists. They overthrew the Shah, Shah, um, this Shah war of Russia, and then established the first Russian uh, communist state on the world, that is Soviet Union. Um, as a revolutionaries, communist revolutionaries, unlike uh, those kind of ordinary revolutionaries in other parts of the world, um, communist re revolutionaries are all political theories. They construct a theories to attract not only the ordinary peoples but even intellectuals to join the revolutions. Say Mao Zedong if himself is a revolutionarist. At the same time, he is also a political theorist. He has his own theory called Maoism. Then Ma Lenin is the same. He also has his own theory. One of the elements of this theory is called empiricism. Empiricism, this theory, is introduced in his book called Empiricism, The Higher Stage of Capitalism, this book. He thinks that um, empiricism, Yi, is an extension of the domestic capitalist order, capitalist society. Um, okay. Capitalists would like to um, establish colonies in different parts of the world in order to maintain the profit level through the export of surplus capital. As I mentioned uh, in the last video clip, colonists, they export a lot of surplus to other parts of the world, like um, Britain. This country made a lot of MTL cars, and then it's, all MTL cars cannot be consumed domestically. So the c British exports these MTL cars to Hong Kong and also other colonies of Britain, say Singapore, Malaysia, India. Um, yes. Then, um, when the colonists successfully sell products to uh, their own colonies, co yes, that is colon colonists, sell their quarter to the colonies, then they can make a lot of profits. Of course, most of the profits goes to capitalists in the home state. However, some of those profits will fund different types of world programs. For instance, like in Hong Kong, we have CSSA, Zhongwen. And this kind of um, welfare the purpose is to pacify proletariats of their own state. With the subsidies of welfare, the proletariats, their living condition 
will be better than before. So the incentive to overthrow the capital system decline after receiving welfare. That's why, according to Leland, um, there's no longer an automatic harmony of interest between all workers on all parts of the world. Because Leland, um, uh, in the past months, think that uh, when we would like to overthrow the whole capital system, then all then all proletarians in different parts of the world should unify together to overthrow the whole capital system in different parts of the world. However, for Lenin, he doesn't think so. This is impossible because proletarians in the most developed of parts of the world, in those kind of imperialist countries like Britain, Germany, France, they have their they are already, they have already been pacified by uh, the capitalists through different types of welfare programs. So it's impossible for um, workers to unify together to fight against capitalists. Then, this theory, one of the main purposes of the, of the construction of this theory is to explain the aspect of First World War. Aspect of First World War. Um, Lenin, he let the October Revolution in Soviet Union. A long that time it's not so Soviet Union. Uh, he led the camp to the uh, sorry, he led the uh, communist revolution, October Revolution, in Russia, in Russia. Then um, one of his purpose is to explain one of the biggest events in his time, in that time. That is the outbreak of First World War. As I mentioned in the first lecture, the outbreak of First World War, First World War is an accident for different people in different parts of the world. No one foresee the outbreak of First World War as the world had, um, had enjoyed a period of very long, peaceful, more than 40 years. No major state, major war between major states. And he also has to establish a theory, Stalin, to, to explain the outbreak of First World War. He thinks that the reason is the, an, the antagonism between imperial states due to their scramble for colonies, their struggle for colonies. As you see here. The next three pages are maps to describe um, the distribution of colonies, or this one is called concessions, Zhou Gai, in different parts of the world. We can see here that usually the best colonies went to those kind of old colonized uh, colon colonists or imperial states like French got a big part in the central of Africa uh, rich in natural resources Britain got the richest parts in Africa Egypt in and also South Africa and Madagascar also a very a place rich in natural resources went to France. How about Germany? The late common little colonies get small places and these places are all poor in natural resources. Here, the same. There is uh, British colonies. France also big, get big colonies in Vietnam in today's Cambodia. Where is German, where is German colonies? And um, in Asia Pacific region, just a few small islands. Then also concessions in China, Zhou Gai. Britain. I'm sorry. Britain. Got young, got places near Yangtze River, and um. Got Hong Kong as its colonies, 
and also um, by joining hands with the United States, establish a joint colony, Gong Gong Zhou Gai in Shanghai. Of course, France also has its own um, Zhou Gai concessions in Shanghai, and France also gets areas in Xichang, near Xichang, Xichang, Saiguang, which are also rich in natural resources and the lands are rich in soil. However, German just got a very small place in the Shantou province, uh, got Qingtao as his um, center of um, or, or the center of his concessions. At that time, or even today, Shandong was not a very rich province in China, not rich in uh, land soil, not rich in natural resources, compared to provinces near Yangtze River and provinces near Xijiang areas. Shandong was a, a little bit backward. And poor, so German. Why German? Later launched the First World War. It's because this country suffered in the scramble of colonies because Germany was a late comer. So it caused the worst colonies. In this struggle for scramble for colonies, it gets that German gets the worst colonies. So it cannot uh, effectively sell its domestic products to colonies because those colonies are so poor. People in those colonies did not have money to buy so many products from Germany. Okay, that's why Germany uh, would like to overthrow the status quo. German dissatisfied with the status quo would like to overthrow it. So that's why German uh, launched the First World War. Okay, this Latin theory, uh, compared with those three theories that I will introduce to you later, it's not very well established theories. However, these theories are there are two purposes for me to introduce this theory. First of all, first of all, it's to explain why revolution should be launched in the weakest link of the capital state, that is Russia, for Lenin. Lenin, in fact, he introduced theory, this imperialist this theory in order to justify why revolution should be launched in Russia. According to Marx, revolution could only be successful in those states which are the most established capital state on the world, including Germany, including Britain. Russia, comparatively speaking, was the poorest state, most backward state in terms of industrialization in the whole European continent. But why revolution succeed in Russia? Because Russia is um called pol proletarian was not polluted by welfare program because Russian capitalists did not have money to fund the welfare program. So that's why proletarians in Russia could um overthrow sorry, still had the incentive to overthrow the Capture state, and also this imperialism, imperialism, this theory, is the basis of um, core exploits the periphery. This um, basic assumption, which heavily influence um, the later Marxist theories core exploitation of periphery. Okay, then the second version. This theory is called the dependency theory. This theory was developed by some Latin American scholars. Uh, what is dependency theory? Very easy is the core the the periphery depend on core. The core exploits the dependence. Um, we let's go to this graph. Uh, in nineteen oh oh, 
the richest twenty five percent of、uh, of the world is income is around five times of the poorest. However, one hundred years later, the richest is income is more than ten times that of the poorest. That means the richer got richer in the last decade in 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 twentieth twentieth century not last decade in the last century. Ah,、uh, in twentieth century, the richer get richer, the poorer, um, their income, comparatively speaking, go a little bit. But however, the gap between the rich and poor was wider in the twentieth century. Then why? Depending on if we try to explain this situation, the main reason is the exploitation of coal against the periphery or periphery. Coal areas are those areas that、um, benefit from technological innovation and high and sustained level of investment. These coal areas they produce a lot of very advanced products, technologically advanced products. Periphery are areas that which produce, uh, labor incentive products, or some cash crops, or produce some natural resources. They are periphery. Okay, I will let me show you which countries are the, the core and which are the periphery. Those countries highlight in. Blue colors are core. Those countries highlighted in red colors are semi per、uh, a periphery. Those、uh, countries highlighted in purple colors are called semi periphery.、Um, I will introduce you later by when I introduce so called world system theory because in the dependency theory the world is divided into just two parts core and periphery. So you see, core are very are those countries very rich and. This country's technology standard is quite high. Those red in colors, periphery. The、um, technological standard is a little bit backward, and they usually poor countries. They export natural resources, crops, agricultural products, not technologically advanced products. Because the coal export、um, technological advanced product in return, the periphery export、um, some kind of raw materials or labor intensive products or some agricultural products. So the coal make a lot of profits in this exchange. Exchange because those technologically advanced products sell in a very high price. How about those kind of natural resources also always sold in. A very low price. Say American export、uh, some i smartphone to Brazil. Say each iPhone, uh, worth around say seven hundred U.S. dollars. In return, Brazil sells um a cow to to U.S. and each cow. Each cow, the price of each cow is around just maybe, um, ten U sixty U.S. dollars. So, ah,、uh, seven hundred earned by U.S. sixty hundred earned by Brazil. That means U.S. can earn six hundred and thirty forty dollars in this exchange. That's why the coal gets richer and the poor and the periphery gets poorer. Okay, yes, this graphic is also explanation. Explore semi peripheries. I will introduce semi periphery to you later. Core exports high profit consumption goods to periphery. Periphery in exchange exports some cheap labor or、um, raw materials to the core. So this is a very unfair exchange. Done. World system theory introduced by this scholar called Emmanuel Wallerstein. 
he is Yemeni first team. He is a scholar, already retired. Uh, he worked in the University of Harvard. Very famous scholars, Yemeni first team. He introduced the concept called World System Theory. Uh, introduced this concept. This concept is an expansion of dependency theory. Dependency theory, there are just two parts, core and periphery. Word system theory has a third part, core and periphery. Um, but firstly, I have to introduce the background of, of this theory. According to this world system theory, um, the world itself is a system. A world system means a certain economic and certain political structure with one depending on the other. There are two types of world systems in this sphere, in, in, in uh, human world, in human history. The first one is world empires. In world empires, such as Roman empires, such as uh, Chinese empires, Qing emperors, Qing emperors, the political and economic center are controlled in a unified, unified center, like the Roman Empire. Its center is uh, concentrated on Rome, this city. World economies is a single division of labor. The world is divided between core, um, periphery, semi periphery, and different parts. In fact, is a a economic distribution system. It's inside economic distribution system. However, the political center is decentralized. There are different centers on of different parts of the world. Like the center of China is Beijing, like the center of Britain is London. There are different centers. However, these centers, all of these centers, um the division of economic activities is based on a single principle. That principle is called World Economics Principle. What is World Economic Principles? I'll talk about it later. Um, first, the world economy established in the took a long 16th century. This is something very historic. I will not introduce you here. But just remember that um, one term called the Age of Discovery. In the past, European their economic activities just concentrate on European continents. However, after the um, age of discovery, European discovered different parts of the world, including this new continent, Americans, Africa, India. So, due to the, this age of discovery, due to the discovery of different parts of the world, the world economic system can be divided to take place in different parts of the world. And that specialization can happen. Different parts of the world specialize in different jobs. So, in the past, uh, North West Europe, that is the Western European states, they're, they're very, they were not as rich as today. Because at that period of time, not only they produce some industrial products, they also have to um, have their own agriculture, Longyip. Then, but however, with the introduction of this world's economy, then Northwest European countries concentrate on making some uh, value added products, including like the making of textiles, uh, and then later shipping, and then later electronic products, and then other very high end products, including maybe some Gucci motor bands. Then, um, for periphery areas, they, of course, as I mentioned, periphery in this world system theory, periphery, they grow some um, wood, sugar, these kind of crops, and also um, produce those kind of labor incentive products, low end products. How unlike uh, the dependency theory. This theory is a little bit complicated because it introduced a concept called semi-periphery. 
there are some economically mixed areas. Um, some peripheral areas are those countries highlighted in purple. They are, of course, not very advanced countries. However, the economy, in some sense, is booming. They are like China, like India. They produce product in between the core and periphery. Like China. Um, China is not as backward as like African countries, like uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan. China has its own industries. It produces smartphones, it produces cars. However, this smartphone, this cars, its quality is a little bit behind those produced in core countries. Say, in core, um, like Germany, it produces motor vans. China, it produces some kind of Dongfeng, a little bit backward. So, money made by periphery, periphery countries is not, not as much as money earned by core countries, like uh, in smartphone, in core countries, in America, uh, America has Apple, China has Xiaomi, and also Huawei. Xiaomi, Huawei, in, in terms of quality, is a little bit behind, uh, is a little bit inferior to Apple. So, these semi periphery areas, um, Yes, here. Okay, and then um, that's an also an equal exchange, because the core countries export advanced technology products to semi periphery and periphery, and the periphery semi periphery in return, uh, sell some low end products to the core, so the core can earn more money than the same periphery and also periphery. The reason for a core country can maintain a core status is because this core country's its state mechanism is stronger than um same periphery and periphery. You can see in the graph graph the governance capacity of American of Western European countries is much higher than that's of those backward countries. How the importance of semi periphery is it is a buffer or shock absorbers in the whole system. Why the whole periphery? These countries, in fact, account for the uh, majority in terms of lumber, in terms of population, is the majority in the whole world. Core is minority. Then, if those uh, periphery you like to gather, they can overthrow the whole capital system. But why they don't you like to gather to fight against the core? The reason is because the reason is because the there's the assist the assistance the the, the existence of periphery. Oh, sorry, the existence of semi periphery. Semi periphery, the existence of semi periphery, um, is a role model to those periphery countries. They say, okay, if we do better, then we have a chance to advance to semi periphery. So instead of overhauling the capital system, they try to um, they try to do better to advance in technological advancement so that they can reach the level of semi periphery say so india in the past is a backward country is a periphery country now because of its development of technologies it advanced to semi periphery status okay that's um, an example why the semi periphery is so important to the whole system because it is a buffer or shock absorbers to prevent those periphery from um rising, overflowing against the whole capital system. Okay, I will introduce Gramsci in next, the next video clip.